live on Facebook. I'm going to, I'm going to put the recording on. So, okay. um, so Christopher, good to, good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you again. So, um, you know, I guess, you know, for, you know, the, some of the people who are probably watching this know me, some of the people who are watching this probably know you. Um, so, um, and you're more important in this than I am, I'm, you know, so maybe just, you know, I know you're, a, you know, you're an assistant principal. Um, can mm -hmm. you just describe a little bit about, you know, what you do? Okay. Yeah. I'm the, um, this is my fifth year in administration, 15th year in education overall. Um, initially started as a science teacher and, um, how we ended up connecting was when the pandemic started, I started a um, Facebook group dedicated to distance learning and eventually it mor morphed into something else called the SEL for educators group. And um, at some point you joined the process. And so we're trying to have a growth mindset about how to get through all the challenges we were facing in education and stay positive and not get knocked down about all the negative attitudes that are towards education in the world. So what, what do you mean challenges? I thought like people got into education and, you know, every, all the problems were solved. What, what type of challenges? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, there's all sorts of challenges in education. And, you know, it initially started specific to me as a teacher. You know, I think back to my first year just teaching and I was terrible looking back at it and it was awful. And, you know, so over the years I've learned and adapted abilities and grew skills and, um, and changed my way of teaching my philosophy on education a little bit. And um, that ended up going towards me um, wanting to make a bigger impact on schools. Um, mm -hmm. So stepping outside of my classroom and getting into administration. And now um, when the pandemic started, it's, I had groups of friends from all different schools I've worked at come asking the same questions. How are we facing these problems? You know, how are we going to deal with this distance learning? We don't have one-to-one -one technology at my school yet and I was having the same conversations five six seven different places right. so I was like let's bring this together in one spot where educators can have a conversation without uh, politicians and even sometimes you know other people that have no idea what it's like to be a teacher jumping in and saying oh you should do this and that when in reality we know as educators that just does not work in the classroom or for a teacher because there's not enough time in the day right and and what caused you to morph it into the SEL group from the distance uh, learning group? Once we got through the initial shutdown for the first three months or so, um, I realized we were changing our conversations. Now um, we got past the initial shock of the pandemic of we're you know shutting down schools. You know we don't even know where to go, and so then it was more like how do we keep people positive and encouraged because most um, educator Facebook I joined, it's just a stream of negativity in the comment sections and stuff like that. You right. Know? Right. Um, my kids did this. The parents were mad about this. My principal is unbelievably doing this to us. They require X, Y, Z, which granted a lot of that stuff is true. And, mm -hmm. but if you just focus on the negative, we're never going to change. And so we need to have a positive mindset. So my goal was to, how can I, address the concerns we have, but keep it positive at the same way and kind of foster growth mindset with educators. Yeah. And I mean, one of the things that I love, you know, looking at the group every day is that, you know, I don't know if you have a focus every single day, but it seems like most days there's a focus. There's a, you know, a Sunday night focus getting, you know, ready, getting ready for Monday. There's a Friday focus, which is preparing for the weekend. There's a Saturday silliness focus there, you know, um, a, a lot of a lot of the the uh, postings in there seem to deal with the well being, both of you know a number of them well being of the teacher, and then a lot of them well being of the student as as well. And I guess that's a deliberate design as as you're moderating yes. the content, right? It, it is a deliberate design, and so um, one of the things was at first I was just randomly posting things I found and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then um, I do still a lot, to be honest. So thank you to everyone else on the internet. Um, mm -hmm. And then I started um, and to keep track of what I was posting and not repeating posts, I was like, let's pick a day of a week and make it. Um, so we have motivational Monday, growth mindset Wednesday. Um, I'm a big believer in gratitude too. So we got thankful Thursday um, and fun Fridays, you know, to laugh at how terrible our jobs can be at time and all the disasters going mm -hmm. on. So they're the funny memes. So, 
and then some positive posts to keep you encouraging along the way yeah and um those i schedule it's nice when you're moderating a group that you can schedule posts ahead of time so usually i'll schedule them um earlier in during the weekend when i have time and mm -hmm. then um i'll share other posts i come across in the afternoons and evenings that i think are appropriate uh -huh. for the group and it might be helpful if, if you just put into the comments here so when people watch this on on the archive um uh, mm -hmm. the uh you know the you know the url or how how do people join the group in case people you know people who are watching weren't necessarily in the group. oh yeah of course and you know that's the crazy part about the group is it initially just started with me and the people i knew and so then mm -hmm. it's grown um from people sharing it with their friends and coworkers. right yeah um no i just find it very motivational you know i i i you know i really you know and it's not just like motivational monday but Mm -hmm. you know thankful thursdays it's it's mm -hmm. like oh yeah you know there's always there's always something to be to be thankful for mm -hmm. what do you um you know as you know we've just had like two or three really difficult years um mm -hmm. you know and, <laughs> and a lot of people are thinking well let's just go back the way it was two or three years ago mm -hmm. and, you know you can never just go back you know we're always yeah. you know moving forward but how are you finding it this year um Every year has faced a different set of challenges. And so now I think we're at a unique challenge. This is a very difficult year. Um, and I don't know how it is across the rest of the country for the most part, but it sounds like it's the same. Um, the teacher shortage, the people, the number of teachers that decided to leave the profession. Oh, that's um, a big and not, one. Just, um, not just the teachers, but you got the substitutes that have left. You got the office workers that are left. Um, you know, personally, in my school, I know we're down several positions. I know schools that have entire grade levels missing of teachers, and they're filled by substitute and coaches. And so um, all that extra workload is shifted to other people. And, um, you know, burnout is going to be a scary thing that's happening across the district because the extra responsibilities that people are absorbing because there's no one else to do that job. Mm -hmm. So if you had, like, and, and I don't want to put, you know, I guess just asking the question is kind of putting you on the spot and you can decline to answer it. But if you mm -hmm. did have a magic wand, you know, how would you attract more people to be teachers, um, mm -hmm. substitutes? You know, what what would what would inspire people, motivate people to become teachers and substitutes? Um, my magic wand, if I had the magic wand. Um... You know, there's key things that are there, the amount of workload, the pay scale and stuff like that. Um, but I think the biggest thing, and you mentioned in one of the earlier podcasts when you're talking about uh, your overseas trips, um, you know, the society respect for education, the importance they put on the value of education to society. Mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest change in education, even from the time I started, is um, how much people don't either respect education or they don't give it the same value as they do other aspects of their lives. And, um, you know, that starts at the home. So if we could shift that narrative and make people realize it's going to happen, um, I think that would start bringing people back. And, you know, I think we're at this pivot point now that it's such a massive problem from the pandemic, all the mm -hmm. other issues that were amplified from it, that I think we're at the pivot point now where societies are going to start thinking, so society as a whole is going to start saying, hey, we do really need to focus on education. Right. Um, and passing bills is not the focus we need to do. That's not going to fix the problems we have. It's oh my gosh. Let me just quickly write that. You know, <laughs> yeah, you're right. No. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, yeah. and you know, so as parents get more involved and you know, they start seeing what's going on, and you know, teachers, you know, are honest about what's going on and not necessarily whining, but you know. I think that's when the change can really start happening. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as as you were talking, I was also you you probably knew this, or you know, I uh, I recently led a group of people, and we spent three days in the Finnish education system, mm -hmm. and um, and you know, and, and I'm actually thinking in two different directions. One, the direction that got me here was this. You know, everybody's talking about the learning gap in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, in Finland, there is no learning gap. I mean, kids didn't lose anything. They were off for roughly the same amount of time that 
that we were. Um, uh, but the whole collaborative framework is different in Finland. Um, parents collaborate with the teachers. Um, the the teachers aren't held to, you know, testing, 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 testing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the job of the teacher is to primarily, well, you know, society wide, it's the job of the of of education is to prepare kids to become highly functioning adults. And and part of being a highly functioning adult is to be able to take charge of, you know, your own output in, and and input, and um, and you look at it here where, you know, where to a large extent we we're really trying to control. I think you know, uh, the politicians are trying to control the administrators, the administrators are trying to control the teachers, the teachers are trying to control the students, and then what mm. happens is that each person loses their um, you know, their voice and their choice. And once you lose their, your voice and your choice, you, you know, you lose a lot of your motivation. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, that is, uh, one thing that is, I believe is true. Um, I know I had one class I was teaching and it was a rough class and it, it, and it taught me a lot, you know, mm-hmm. when you have the challenging classes, you do typically learn to be better teachers because of that. And, um, I was teaching science and most of the recommendations I had was like, well, stop doing labs, stop, you know, let's do paperwork and, you know, they'll get bored and they'll start behaving and want to do better activities. Um, tried that, that wasn't working at all. And so I was like, all right, well, let's start doing labs. So I had to do a lab every day. And, you know, by the end of the semester, or by the end of the year, it was a great group group of kids, you know, they still were knuckleheads and had issues, but still in contact with a lot of them and mm-hmm. they grew up to be successful adult. But when I start giving them the responsibility and the choice, it made a huge difference in their ability. And, you know, you got to focus on providing those small goals so the kids can win too. I mean, the labs weren't anything complicated at the time, but you got those, you set the small goals and you celebrated those small successes. Like, Hey, you did that. Good job. You know, like you're, you know, they may not have got the correct answer in the math aspect of it, but they completed the lab. They understood the purpose of the lab. So you start celebrating those small wins and mm-hmm. eventually they want to start trying better and doing better and it works. Yeah, I I think that our um, our knee jerk reaction is to say we need more discipline and we need more compliance. And yet mm-hmm. once you impose discipline and you expect compliance, you really inhibit learning mm-hmm. and and inhibit motivation. Yeah, and I think too, you see that then you end up having the reverse effects in the long term. So like where they really try to crack down on schools and stuff like that, they end up having higher discipline rates eventually. Right. Yeah. Um, because you know the learning stops and then they get behind. You get those learning gaps, and then when you're a uh, eighth grader reading on a third grade level you're not going to be participating in class right right you may be quiet for a while mm-hmm. <laughs> until your hormones get raging and you know um you yeah. know, and you get bigger than the teacher and the teacher <laughs> can't just like say sit down <laughs> exactly right yeah um so and are you are you seeing teachers and students um, you know, I mean, what I, well, and what are they, what are they doing about this? You know, what supposedly, uh, huge, which you see in the, in, in the media all the time, mm-hmm. it's like the performance gap, the performance gap, there was, you know, mm-hmm. the, um, the New York, you know, I'm in the New York area. So the New York times, um, mm-hmm. today had this huge article on, um, uh, on, you know, colleges have a new generation of students who, um, who have this huge performance gap and it's a major issue for, for, for colleges. So if, what are, um, like, how is that filtering around, ed, you know, teachers and schools where people are talking all, all the time and the press, the politicians are talking all the time about the performance gap. I think it's bringing everyone down, honestly. Um, you know, it's one of those things everyone knows happening I'm sure New York, much like Texas, they pass um, students that 
failed the state exams, have to get X number of tutoring hours, um, which is ridiculous amount. So now we got kids staying after school for two hours or going to Saturday school. So school six days a week. And so um, you got teachers doing that too. Um, and you're losing the energy. I mean, if you're sleep deprived, hunger deprived and overworked and you have no time to rest and process, the gap is, I believe, in my opinion, is only going to expand. Yeah. And so I think it's also increasing on teacher burnout as well, because mm -hmm. um, they have all these extra preps where, you know, it may be better to slow down and just like, all right, we're, we know we're behind. So we're going to adjust this year for how far we believe the average kid is behind and then see how far we can produce and get there. It would be more of my opinion, but, you know, uh, it's also, no, I, yeah. There's also the uh, social emotional gap. I, I mean, a lot of the kids, I, I believe a lot of kids are kind of stuck from about two years ago mental in their mentality as yep. well. Yep. Or you get somebody who's now in second grade and they didn't really have the socializing experience mm -hmm. that you have in, normally in kindergarten and first grade. And, you know, their, their brains are developed, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the neurons are there for you know as a second grader but the behaviors are there from a from a four-year-old because mm -hmm. you know they they haven't transitioned yeah exactly. one, of the, one of the things i like so much about you know the sel group is that um you know there's so much that's um that we want kids to learn that can't be measured mm -hmm. and we're not really as a society talking about those things, you know, like how do you measure a kid's ability to be, have empathy? How do you measure a kid's ability to be creative? I mean, we don't have, um, you know, we're, we're not measuring those. And because we're not measuring those, we're not really uh, going in those directions. And that yet those are the things that eventually prove to be, um, I guess, higher level requirements for becoming mm -hmm. a fully functional adult. Yeah, I agree 100%. And, you know, I think another one aspect to model would be how does, how well does a kid learn to self-regulate? Um, right. Yes. Um, uh -huh. mm -hmm. And adults even at this point. I mean, you see all the crazy fights on subways and airplanes and stuff like that. Well, it's a arguments. good thing we have politicians who self-regulate well, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, so I, I think that, you know, realizing that, you know, is a very important skill to have and it will change careers and the optimal thing. So, you know, especially for a generation of kids and even the young adults college who grew up on all the iPhone games where they, you know, get multiple chances for everything. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't see that grit um, or the perseverance anymore to keep on trying. You know, it's like, oh, I didn't get the first time. I'll just move on to the next game. Right. Yep. And um, are there things, you know, I hate to put the the bonus, the the onus on the teachers to do it. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's the teachers. The, I mean, I feel like the teachers are our only hope, you know, maybe the parents. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, but if, you know, the idea is we want to, we want to um, help the kids mm -hmm. and the kids are exposed to other kids, parents, and teachers. Those are the three groups that they're most exposed to. Uh, are there, you know, are there things that that you see that you know teachers could be do doing? And the problem is that any uh, there's a lot of problems, but one of the things is that anything that a teacher does, he can't add to their time because you know everybody only has 24 hours a day. You know, yeah. um, there is a lot teachers can do. I believe. Um, I think a lot of it also goes to kind of changing up the whole structures of schools and. So it's in a little bit more lessons to project-based learning and um, giving activities where kids where kids cannot be successful and they have to have multiple attempts to be successful. They gotta learn that failure is okay as long as you make it your first attempt in learning, as the quote goes. Right. Yeah. You can get it, um, get it. So I think there's a lot you can do and it doesn't have to be a huge implementation, but you know, just getting the kids to try and try again you know one simple 
that thing that always worked for me is I never answer a student question. I would always ask them questions. Um, you know, like they come, I don't know how to do this problem. Okay. Have you read the problem? Well, yes. Well, read it to me. I haven't read it. And so I make them read it to me. And then uh -huh. I ask questions. What do they know? And so, you mm -hmm. know, it was always great when the kid would walk up to me and it's like, no, I'm going to go ask somebody else because you won't tell me anything. Right. <laughs> No, and, and as you're talking about, you know, problem-based learning, essentially, that's what you did with that difficult class mm -hmm. years ago, right, is mm -hmm. um, they were doing labs or, you know, problem-based mm -hmm. learning, and that in itself gave them the, um, you know, the voice, the choice, the executive mm -hmm. function um, to progress and look, and, and as you say, look where they are today, right? Yeah. So I think it requires the teacher also being more curious and not judgmental. I'm a big Ted Lasso fan, so I'm still in that quote. But uh, mm -hmm. um, I think Walter Whitman said it first. But, you know, if, you know, like even with misbehaviors or kids, you know, if you start questioning what they're doing, you're teaching them to stop and reflect on what they're supposed to be doing. And mm -hmm. then a lot of times they'll correct themselves. You know, if they're in an escalated state, they won't be able to. Um, but if it's just minor misbehaviors in the classroom, um, a lot of times they'll start self-regulating themselves. Yeah. And so, you know, that's another way. And then, you know, that just being curious and judgmental gets the kids to start doing the same thing. They start modeling that behavior. And so then right. they have that curiosity instilled in them because they see it and how it can work. Mm -hmm. They may not understand it. And one of the things, you know, as you're talking that, that hits me and I, um, I actually, I, I gave a talk on this in Portugal and I'm giving a talk in December that um, on the importance of teachers having fun and enjoying what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Like if yeah. you're, if you're teaching or if I'm teaching and I'm not enjoying what I'm doing, the kids aren't going to be enjoying what they're doing and none of us is going to be particularly motivated. Mm -hmm. so, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's part of the, reason for this you know, L group and keeping it positive because um we need to keep it positive in education mm -hmm. i mean you know i know um toxic positivity became a trait that's not what i'm talking about but you know um it's yeah you know things might not be going well but there's good things happening too so we need to focus on the good things that are happening and then start yep. looking for the solution for the bad thing and mm -hmm. that starts with having a positive attitude and being excited for your class yeah if you're not excited in your class why would a kid be excited in your class right right i mean yep. i yeah. can't blame them like yeah sometimes you just have to close the door and do something fun and fun doesn't mean that you're not working or it doesn't mean that mm -hmm. the kids aren't working because sometimes you know if you look at the things that we spend the most time trying to perfect our our, our skills in it's the things that we enjoy doing yeah. you know whether it's work or 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 um or leisure activity or whatever if we're enjoying doing it then we're willing to put the work in to really improve mm -hmm. and see that's where elementary teachers typically succeed especially the lower elementary pre-k kindergarten first grade mm -hmm. um, they turn everything into a song competition um dance party to pick up trash i've, I've seen all sorts of things and you know having those routines and structures and process in class you know it's cheesy Middle schoolers get awkward about it, but the big kids love it too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so um, it's bring you know having fun and making things into competition. The kids are always competing with each other. Cool. So uh, I'm looking at the time, and um, we're about you know five minutes actually over what I you know I, I thought we'd, we'd be going for about twenty minutes, and um, so you know I don't want to keep you, and maybe just like yeah. how would you. You know, the people who are watching this are friends, mostly friends mm -hmm. of yours or, and, and or, you know, friends of mine. Um, you know, what would you, would you want to say, what would you want to say to your friends right now? Thank you for watching and let's just be positive about the future for education and start thinking of solutions and keep a growth mindset. Like, don't focus on all the problems. Let's be solution oriented. Well, if I had a choice, I'd want to work in your school. Well, thank you. Okay. You can come. I got okay. some positions over. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. All right. Um, well, uh, Christopher, thank you. You know, uh, this was fun. Um, yes, it was. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll do it again in the spring and we can talk about what this, you know, what, what we learned in the school year. But um, thank you. Um, All I, right. I really enjoyed doing these. And have a great evening. You do the same. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.